Hello there, my name's Barth, and in this video we'll be looking at how to solve Einstein's most famous equation. Well, second most famous after E is equal to mc squared. Yes, we're talking about the Einstein field equations. We'll take a look at what this equation actually says and what it means to solve it. So if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. So first things first, this really complicated looking piece of maths is the main equation in a theory called general relativity. General relativity studies the effect of gravity in our universe and tells us about how it affects space and time. The basic gist is that everything in our universe exists within space and time, or collectively what we call space-time. Things like light and objects with mass can move through space-time. Now interestingly, in general relativity, space-time can be warped. In other words, objects within the universe can follow curved paths as they move through space-time because of the curving or warping of the space-time itself. And this warping of space-time is related to gravity. Objects with mass, objects that are made up of stuff essentially, end up warping the space-time around them. And other objects moving in that region of space-time follow that curvature. So basically, mass makes space-time warp and curve, and this curvature determines how objects move through it. Einstein's field equations tell us exactly how this happens. It answers questions like exactly how much mass you need to make space-time warp by a specific amount. Now, notice that I'm calling this thing Einstein's field equations, plural. Well, that's because this is a tensor equation, or in other words, a neat way of packaging lots of equations up at the same time. I've made a full video discussing Einstein's field equations in detail on my channel before, so check it out up here if you're interested, and I'll also leave a link in the description below. For this video, all we need to know is that this term here basically accounts for all the stuff found in any region of space-time we want to study. It deals with how much energy, momentum, and pressure we have because of light, other electromagnetic waves, and other objects with mass, ranging from quarks all the way up to galaxies, in our region of space-time. And these terms tell us about exactly how much space-time is warping. So we're just linking how much stuff there is in space-time to how it warps. There's obviously a lot more subtlety to this equation, but for now, all we need is the basic idea. Because what I want to talk about is how to solve Einstein's field equations. So let's talk about what it actually means to solve them. Basically, because the equations are trying to describe how space-time behaves in our universe based on the distribution of stuff inside it generally, a solution to the equations is any situation where the warping of space-time correctly matches the distribution of stuff that we're considering. Or in other words, for a given way in which stuff is distributed in any region of space-time that we want to consider, the space-time should not be too warped or not warped enough in order to behave like the actual universe does, the one that we can observe. Now, the Einstein field equations are generally very difficult to solve. Finding a distribution of stuff and simultaneously what the space-time around it should look like is tricky. And the maths of these equations can get very difficult as well. However, scientists have found exact solutions to the equations by considering simple scenarios, like the distribution of stuff not changing over time, meaning the warping of space-time shouldn't change over time either, only over space if necessary. The first solution we'll look at is a great example of this. It's known as the Schwarzschild solution, named after Karl Schwarzschild, who found the solution literally within a month of Einstein publishing his general theory of relativity. It's also worth noting that Johannes Drost, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name somewhat correctly, also found the solution a few months later, using a simpler and cleaner method. Now, this solution deals with how space-time is warped specifically around a spherically shaped object that has mass. But importantly, this solution was found so quickly because Schwarzschild and Drost considered the very simple scenario of a sphere in space-time. It could not be spinning, nor could it have a net charge. And it also assumed that the space-time by itself was flat. If you want to know what that means, then please check out my video on the Einstein field equations. Basically, they just considered a very simple spherical object and tried to find out how its mass warps the space-time around it. And this solution could be used for spheres of different sizes and masses. So we could use it to find out how space-time was warped around the Earth, for example, or the Sun. Now, both of these objects are not exactly spherical, but they're nearly spherical enough that the Schwarzschild solution is a good approximation. Also, they are both spinning objects, as we know, but the Schwarzschild metric should be for objects that aren't spinning, right? Well, yes, but on a cosmological scale, neither of them are spinning particularly fast. So again, the Schwarzschild metric is a pretty good approximation. 
The Schwarzschild metric is probably most well known for describing another kind of object entirely though, one which has an extremely large mass packed into a small enough region of space-time that the space-time around it becomes very significantly warped. Yes, we're talking about a black hole. The Schwarzschild metric can be used to show that these extremely dense objects do indeed warp space-time so much that even light cannot escape once it passes the event horizon. Now, it's worth noting that the maths of the Schwarzschild metric actually stretches all the way into the center of the black hole and then breaks down at the very, very center because of lots of infinities and such like. But really, we don't actually know if the space-time inside of the black hole follows the same solution, or if there's another solution that neatly stitches onto the external one, based on some mass distribution inside that we don't know about. We literally have, at this moment in time, no way of knowing, because nothing can escape the black hole past the event horizon, and so we have no way of getting information about what happens in there. However, outside the black hole, all the way up until the event horizon, we do know that the Schwarzschild metric works nicely. Again, this is for non-rotating black holes with no charge. There are other solutions that describe rotating black holes or ones with charge. Check out this video up here for more information on the Kerr solution for rotating black holes. So we've seen that the Schwarzschild solution is a simple solution that describes the space-time for spherical objects for things like planets and stars, and just outside for things like black holes. There's actually an even simpler solution to the Einstein field equations, the simplest one that can exist, in fact. But in some ways it's a bit boring, and in other ways it's actually very important. The solution I'm talking about studies what space-time looks like when there is no stuff in the region of space-time that we're thinking about. And basically it says that in the absence of stuff, the space-time should be flat or unwarped. Simple, right? Well, yeah, kind of, but this is just one solution even within the absence of stuff. What I'm saying is that just because there is no stuff in whatever region we're considering, and one possible solution says that space-time is not warped there, does not mean that this is the only possible solution. Another solution, for example, is one where space-time does warp over time, even without stuff present in the region we're considering. Why? Because maybe outside our region, there was something going on that generated gravitational waves. These are literally ripples and warps within space-time that can travel through space-time like waves. It's actually not been very long since we discovered them. But anyway, the point is that Einstein's field equations describe different situations in the universe in terms of how stuff is distributed within space-time and how space-time bends as a result of it. Finding solutions is very difficult because the maths is tricky, but we can make simplifications and think about the geometry that we want to study to help us out. And we've also looked at a couple of different solutions to the equations. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit that bell button for more fun physics content. Please check out my merch linked in the description. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. And finally, a huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons and all the others over on my Patreon page. There's a link to that in the description as well if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.